Well, hello again, my friends. Thank you yet again for joining us today. We are in Icon Bronco number 97. It is a 1971, built in our old school style, and a little something special and different. It's a Roadster edition, which these are super cool. We haven't built too many. So come along as we do a deep dive into the details. Check out this crazy color, isn't this great? This is a factory color. It's called Grabber Orange, quite appropriately, because it pretty much grabs your eyeballs and doesn't let go of them. Super bright, super funky, super 70s. But I'm really digging it, especially with the rarely chosen paint finish bumpers instead of the chrome bumpers. So that's something that Ford offered on many of the packages, except for the fancy pants ones back in the day but rarely do our clients select it. But I think it's kind of cool in that retro with an old school, keeping that vibe. So we did the same Wimbledon white on the grill inserts with the chrome bright work and surrounds. Front and rear bumpers of the paint finish. We stayed with a Wimbledon white for the wheels, for the cage, for the rear view mirror, and for the bikini frame. And uh, you know, we haven't done many of these Roadster editions, but basically, Ford offered them in the earlier years on the Broncos. Obviously, there's no doors. You get those fiberglass insert thingamajiggers. No hard top. And uh, sometimes we've done them with no AC, just heat only, because it's kind of like a fart in a windstorm with being so open, having AC. But we might as well put it in there. It doesn't really cost that much more, and this client preferred it. So we left it in. So grabber orange. Nice medium gray for the bikini top. That's the same insulated technique that we use on our full soft tops. So it's black on the inside. There's like an eighth waterproof kind of neoprene. I don't even know what it is. Some sort of closed cell foam that gets heat laminated. And then this is uh, just a one layer canvas for the black finish, but all CNC and powder coated for the frame, which keeps not just your bikini top from flapping around and beating your eardrums out, but also the Ford windshield frames were notoriously loosey-goosey. So that just keeps everyone nice and tailored and tight together. We did the old school style visors. Yes, I'm guilty of using Toyota Land Cruiser visors on a Ford Bronco, please forgive me. But the factory Bronco visors and windshield wiper thingy are just, they just ain't cool. So Wimbledon White again on the dash, old school format. So all CNC and chromed lights, wipers, washer, fan, vent, and temp. This wee light right here casts just a nice soft glow down on the dash for legibility for your function indications when you get rolling. We kept the old school ignition switch on the old schools with the ACC on off start, but it's, it's our design built from scratch. We basically stole the font from the original, but now it functions with our modern key set. Speaking of which, we're trying these out right now. So these are from our buddies at Keyport, and it still has the flashlight, the USB drive, safety flasher, and it hides all your keys. In the case of Roadster, there really aren't that many keys, so we added a couple other multifunction tools. But, um, Kind of liking that. Nice and clean and simple. Icon center console. So of course it's got our machined aluminum rifle pen. So we sell these on the site. These are really popular, really nice quality pen. They're made in Germany for us. And then you've got two cup holders in the front, which have removable factory Ford little cup buckets. We put two more in the rear because we did the bench seat. The console you know pretty well by now. It's uh, LED lights for the interior cabin and for the rear floor. Two power ports on the rear, cubby in the front, audio sub compartment, gas, shock, stainless steel construction. They're super stout. They're really, basically they're really good quality because I couldn't find anyone else who gave a damn who was making consoles. I even offered it up to the top steel console company in the U.S. and they're like, eh. In the case of this one, we modified it because for the audio system on a Roadster, we generally will do a smart device like Bluetooth dependent audio system. So we added a cubby, a little storage box here, 
since we don't have the traditional full-size head unit. And now from your phone or tablet or whatever, it goes through Bluetooth receiver, digital sound processor, and then this black knob right here, the principal head is for volume control. The lower rotator is for the base circuit control. And then you push down on it to excite the Bluetooth link. This truck also has the seat heaters, which I'm sure in a Roadster are definitely gonna come in handy. And uh, the speakers, it's the usual stuff. So integrated into the cargo panels, also integrated in the front in the kick panel area are the Focal K2s with separates. Um, let's talk about the seats. These are, this textile is so much fun. So this is actually a vinyl. You'd be hard pressed to tell except for the durability factor. So it comes from Hydes, H-Y-D-E-S. They've been a great supplier we work with fairly often. And then from Levon, the textile inserts are actually from like industrial, commercial, like hotel, resort, patio furniture. So they're super durable, high UV and bacterial rating, but that just the character and style of them were just so perfect uh, for this funky 70s vibe truck. Of course, as always, you'll notice the recline hardware is all machined aluminum, new plastic, and it's got a really nice finish to it. For the rugs, they're fully removable like they always are. And they're the Hargarten Square Weave, which are rubber backed. And then the floors, of course, are heat cured in polyurea. And then under that polyurea is an epoxy sealer. And then underneath that, the entire body is powder coated before it is final assembled and before it is painted. So hopefully this will last a long, long time. We did Wimbledon white painted two spoke wheel wrapped in white leather. We did the tilt column this time also painted in white. We did the tuck and tumble and removable rear seat. We also went ahead and did color matched seat belts in sort of kind of Wimbledon white just for a little extra fun. These spears of course light up like they always do. So they got a low output setting and uh, they have a high output setting. Um, Climb really digs the powered steps and the stance of our trucks is still pretty tall. So let me show you. I wish there was a more elegant way to do it, but this seems to work out pretty well. Right on the outboard edge of the dash, we added a toggle. So that gets the job done. You hit the toggle and party on or forget and people yell at you and tell you your step is down. But anyway, so that seemed like the only way we could think of to give the client the accessibility he wanted, but uh, no doors, no power windows too. deal with it. For the rear view mirror, this is an early factory style mirror. We did it on the driver's side only. We were going to do it on the passenger side, but when the truck was still a shell, I sat in and it was like, well, that is so entirely pointless. You could not ask for more visibility. It's so wide open. Just saying. The icon tire carrier assembly, which we, uh, due to very popular high demand, designed this to work on your stock vintage Ford Bronco. So it's got a full width structural brace that adds rigidity to your chassis and then gets the responsibility of the spare off of the sheet metal so they're not wagging and clacking and puts it to the chassis and it's braced three axis. So you've got the pin that you manually lift and pull back, or it'll lock when it's in the uh, about 108 degrees by my weird brain's visual guess, open position so it doesn't go out into traffic lane and cause you a problem, nor does it come back and beat up your tailgate. So tailgate, so we did smooth out the license plate bracket assembly. We did the Wimbledon white painted work for FORD. Other than that, it's a tailgate. Polyurea for durability. Got rid of those clacky, clanky elbow hinge thingamajiggers and went to the shrouded stainless cable. Um, back here, you've got our 5,000 pound rated cargo tie down anchors. There you can see those lights I was talking about, excited. Same old seat, tucks and tumbles, gets out of the way. 
And that's pretty much the whole story on the B side. Oh yeah, also for beach duty, which this truck is gonna see a lot of, we did the Viar dedicated air compressor. So you've got a manual power on here. There you've got your chalk connector, steel brace so you won't beat it up off road, but super friendly and handy to have if you are off road and you air down your tires for traction or sand for traction. You don't have to limp back and wait in line at the gas station and hope the gas station actually has an air compressor and you have 20 quarters. We do do the ARB locking diffs, but that compressor, man, you got to be really patient to air up big tires with it. So we really prefer to run the Viair unit. Uh, let's go under the hood and we'll talk about mechanical. So, of course, the heart of the beast is the Coyote 5.0 aluminum fuel injected V8 as found in the current production Mustang GT. You'll notice the hood has gas shocks so you don't have to deal with the prop rod and the weight of the beast. Pretty full engine bay, but everything's accessible. So your remote fill for power steering, easy to get to, brake master by Willwood, Hydratech, hydro boosted brake assist system, which plums and gets its power hydraulically through the power steering pump. We've got a commercial busman panel for your chassis fuses. Right next to it are engine circuit related fuses. Uh, all aerospace connectors, all cross-link wire, everything is hand soldered and double crimped, so super robust system. For batteries, we stick to the old school interstates. They're brilliant. We've tried all the high tech this and that, and frankly, these work. They last a long time, and if you're in the middle of nowhere and you need a battery, everyone has this size and grade battery. So we just love them and leave them alone. Same with the old FOMOCO sort of bladder bag. Um, they work. It's kind of fun, a little nostalgia. Suspension and axles, of course. We're running the Curry Industries powder coated, 100% new assemblies specific for Icon. So it's a high pinion Dana 44 in the front. It is a high pinion Dana 60 in the rear. Fine spline axles. You see our brakes peeking out at you. They are ridiculously overrated. Icon sport brakes by Brembo. So six piston front calipers, four piston rear, slotted and rotors, two piece hats, titanium hardware. All the steering linkage is all highly trafficked, US OEM, one-ton truck stuff. This truck has our sport suspension. So of course we never run leaf springs. That's one of the big differentiators with the icons. The ride quality and off-road performance is unmatched. So you have 12 inches of travel. You've got radius arms, you've got Johnny joints, you've got tunable sway bars, different setting points. This truck is running our sport suspension. So it has the remote canisters with the two points of adjustment for fast rebound and uh, longer, slow rebound. So you can really dial it in for your terrain and case and character. Of course, we're running the ARB locking differentials front and rear. We're running a manual tranny on this one. I'm so happy there's more and more manuals finally. Maybe all my berating and my videos is getting to people. <laughs> can't even get most new cars with a manual and it's part of the fun. So Ace and Warner AX15 manual five speed tranny with a hydraulic clutch and then that of course is sending power through to the Atlas twin stick shift on the fly part time four wheel drive transfer case. So you have independent control over the front and rear axles. There are safety locks that won't allow you to do something catastrophic like be four high in the front and four low in the rear. I could only manage through that carnage would be nuts. Uh, but you know, a friend of mine was recently saying, you know, it might be interesting, especially on these that, you know, number 198 or whatever, to like add a subplot to your videos. So tell me if this is lame or if it's interesting. Here's the subplot. Me being the OCD serial craftsman that I am, um, I love all different aspects of design. And that's one of the things that drew me into transportation design as a career because it combined so many 
different art and design forms that I like in one cohesive, extroverted, very useful, utility-based platform. But anyway, I like woodworking, leather craft, all sorts of stuff. And recently, my latest deep dive has been apparel design. So I've been studying and reading up and taking classes. And when I travel abroad, I always try and tie that travel to immersing myself in some craft known to that particular country or community, which is really fun and saves you money and keeps you out of the tourist traps. I highly recommend it. But what do you guys do? What are your hobbies? If you need one, I can't recommend leather craft enough. It is so much fun and it is a deep dive when you get into it because there's so many different styles and techniques and the tools, my lord, the tools are beautiful. So nothing better than making beautiful things with just your hands with beautiful tools. So to celebrate this truck, I made this funky jacket. So same sort of funky 70s color scheme. I designed the cut, it's just kind of a straightforward, like a ranch coat, but I elevated it by lining it in this really nice funky color silk. And then I found these vintage wooden buttons on Etsy, and I did this kind of funky mustard, orangey stitch situation. That was really fun to make, kept me out of trouble for, you know, this stuff takes a while. If you're designing your own patterns, and if you're a dude sewing, there's pretty much no good patterns out there. It's all girl stuff. So. That's a whole nother thing, and I'm still learning how to draft, as they call it, make like master blocks for patterns. But it's really a fun exercise. I highly recommend it. Also made the hat. Also made the belt. Again, well, not the hat, but the belt with the truck and mine and that funky orange combo. And I am a sucker for vintage belt buckles, so that is one of many. So there's your subplot. Was it stupid? Was it interesting? Only you can say. Until you beat me up, I'm simply going to shut up and say thank you so much for your attention. Everyone at Icon really appreciates it, and uh, it really helps us spread the word. So please like or dislike the video as you see fit. Subscribe if you be so kind. And if you're curious about these other craft antics of mine, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Icon4x4 because I don't muddy it everywhere else, but my poor Instagram followers get to endure leather jackets and wallets and bags and all sorts of stuff. So be good to yourself, be good to the planet, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.